The United Kingdom has been involved with the Internet since it was created. The telecommunications infrastructure provides Internet access to businesses and home users in various forms, including cable, DSL, and wireless. The Internet Country Code top-level domain for the United Kingdom is, UK and is sponsored by Nominet. History The UK was involved in research and development of packet switching, wide area networks, and Internet protocols since their origins. The development of these technologies was international from the beginning, although much of the research and development that led to the Internet was driven and funded by the United States. Early years of the Internet Beginning in the mid-1960s, Donald Davies and his team at the National Physical Laboratory pioneered packet switching, now the dominant basis for data communications in computer networks worldwide. They developed and implemented the concept in a local area network, the NPL network, which operated from 1969 to 1986, and carried out work to analyze and simulate the performance of packet switching networks. Their research and practice was adopted by the ARPANET in the United States, the forerunner of the Internet, and influenced other researchers in the UK and Europe. Peter T. Kirstein's research group at University College London was one of the first international connections on the ARPANET in 1973, alongside Norwegian Seismic Array and Sweden's Tannum Earth Station. Kirstein co-authored with Vint Cerf one of the most significant early technical papers on the internetworking concept. His research group at UCL adopted TCP, IP in 1982, a year ahead of ARPANET, and played a significant role in the very earliest experimental Internet work. Kirstein's group included Sylvia Wilbur who programmed the computer used as the local node for the network. Post Office Telecommunications developed the first public packet switching network EPSS in 1977 based on protocols defined by the UK academic community in 1975. It was replaced with the packet switch stream in 1980. A number of local and research networks in the 1970s serving the Science and Engineering Research Council community became SRCNet, later called CERCINET. In the early 1980s a standardization and interconnection effort started based on BI.25 protocols. This became Janet in 1984, the UK's high-speed academic and research network that linked all universities, higher education establishments, and publicly funded research laboratories. In 1991, Janet adopted Internet Protocol on the existing network. Topic. World Wide Web In 1989, Tim Berners-Lee, working at CERN in Switzerland, wrote a proposal for what would become the World Wide Web The following year, he specified HTML, the hypertext language, and HTTP, the protocol. Virtual networking services between the UK and the US were being developed in late 1990. BT, British Telecommunications PLC, began using the WWW in 1991 during a collaborative project called the Oracle Alliance program. It was founded in 1990 by Oracle Corporation, based in Redwood Shores CA USA, to provide information for its corporate partners and about those partners. BT became involved in May 1991. File sharing was required as part of the program and, initially, mailed floppy disks were used. Then in July 1991 access to the Internet was implemented by the BT network engineer Clive Salmon using the BT packet switching network. A link was established from Ipswich to London for access to the Internet backbone. Access to the Internet for the project leader, Richard Moulding of BT, was established in July 1991 and the first file transfers made via a Next-based WWW interface were completed in October 1991. An early attempt to provide access to the web on television was being developed in 1995. Dial-up 
Dial-up Internet access was first introduced in the UK by Pipex in March 1992, having been established during 1991 as the UK's first commercial Internet provider, and by November 1993 provided Internet service to some 150 customer sites. One of its first customers was Demon Internet which popularised dial-up modem-based Internet access in the UK. This narrowband service has been almost entirely replaced by the new broadband technologies, and is generally only used as a backup. <laughs> <laughs> broadband Broadband Internet access in the UK was, initially, provided by a large number of regional cable television and telephone companies which gradually merged into larger groups. The development of Digital Subscriber Line DSL technology has allowed broadband to be delivered via traditional copper telephone cables. Also, wireless broadband is now available in some areas. These three technologies cable, DSL and wireless now compete with each other. More than half of UK homes had broadband in 2007 with an average connection speed of 4.6 megabits per second. Bundled communications deals mixing broadband, digital TV, mobile phone and landline phone access were adopted by 40% of UK households in the same year, up by a third over the previous year. This high level of service is considered the main driver for the recent growth in online advertising and retail. In 2006, the UK market was dominated by six companies, with the top two taking 51%, these being Virgin Media with a 28% share, and BT at 23%. As of July 2011, BT's share had grown by 6%, and the company became the broadband market leader. The UK broadband market is overseen by the government watchdog Ofcom. According to Ofcom's 2007 report the average UK citizen uses the Internet for 36 minutes every day, the Ofcom Communications Market 2018 report provided updated UK broadband usage statistics. A standout statistic from the 2012 Ofcom report compared with the 2018 Ofcom report is that the 2012 report showed just 5% of adults had access and use of a smart TV, this increased to 42% by 2018 exemplifying the extra bandwidth required by broadband providers on their networks. Cable. Cable broadband uses coaxial cables or optical fiber cables. The main cable service provider in the UK is Virgin Media and the current maximum speed available to their customers is 350 megabits per second, subject to change. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Digital Subscriber Line DSL Asymmetric Digital Subscriber Line ADSL was introduced to the UK in trial stages in 1998 and a commercial product was launched in 2000. In the United Kingdom, most exchanges, local loops and backhauls are owned and managed by BT Wholesale, who then wholesale connectivity via Internet service providers, who generally provide the connectivity to the Internet, support, billing and value-added services such as web hosting and email. As of October 2012, BT operate 5,630 exchanges across the UK with the vast majority being enabled for ADSL. Only a relative handful have not been upgraded to support ADSL products, in fact it is under 100 of the smallest and most rural exchanges. Some exchanges, numbering under 1,000, have been upgraded to support SDSL products. However, these exchanges are often the larger exchanges based in major towns and cities so they still cover a large proportion of the population. SDSL products are aimed more at business customers and are priced higher than ADSL services. <laughs> <laughs> Unbundled local loop Many companies are now operating their own services using local loop unbundling. Initially Bulldog Communications in the London area and EasyNet through their sister consumer provider UK Online enabled exchanges across the country from London to central Scotland. In November 2010, having purchased EasyNet in the preceding months, Sky closed the business-centric UK Online with little more than a month's notice. 
Although EasyNet continued to offer business-grade broadband connectivity products, UKO customers could not migrate to an equivalent EasyNet service, only being offered either a Mac to migrate provider or the option of becoming a customer of the residential-only Sky Broadband ISP with an introductory discounted period. Also, some previously available service features like FastPath useful for time-critical protocols like SIP were not made available on Sky Broadband, leaving business users with a difficult choice particularly where UK Online were the only LLU provider. Since then, Sky Broadband has become a significant player in the Quad Play Telecoms market, offering ADSL line rental and call packages to customers who have to pay a supplement if they are not also Sky Television subscribers. Whilst Virgin Media is the nearest direct competitor, their Quad Play product is available to fewer homes given the fixed nature of their cable infrastructure. TalkTalk Talk is the next DSL-based ISP with a mature Quad Play product portfolio EEs being the merger of the Orange and T-Mobile service providers, and focusing their promotion on forthcoming fiber broadband and 4G LTE products. Market consolidation and expansion has permitted service providers to offer faster and less expensive services with typical speeds of up to 24 megabits per second downstream subject to ISP and line length. They can offer products at sometimes considerably lower prices, due to not necessarily having to conform to the same regulatory requirements as BT Wholesale. For example, eight unbundled LLU pairs can deliver 10 megabits per second over 3,775 meters for half the price of a similar fiber connection. In 2005, another company, B, started offering speeds of up to 24 megabits per second downstream and 2.5 megabits, sec upstream using ADSL. 2 Plus with Annex M, eventually from over 1,250 UK exchanges. B were taken over by O2's parent company Telefonica in 2007. On 1 March 2013 O2 Telefonica sold B to Sky who have now migrated O2 and B customers onto the somewhat slower Sky network. Exchanges continue to be upgraded, subject to demand, across the country, although at a somewhat slower pace since BT's commencement of FTTC rollout plans and near saturation in key geographical areas. Ipstream Up until the launch of Max Services, the only ADSL packages available via BT Wholesale were known as Ipstream Home 250, Home 500, Home 1000, and Home 2000, contention ratio of 50 to 1, and Office 500, Office 1000, and Office 2000, contention ratio of 20 to 1. The number in the product name indicates the downstream data rate in kilobits per second. The upstream data rate is up to 250 kilobits per second for all products. For BT wholesale ADSL products, users initially had to live within 3.5 kilometers of the local telephone exchange to receive ADSL, but this limit was increased thanks to Rate Adaptive Digital Subscriber Line (RADSL). Although users with RADSL possibly had a reduced upstream rate depending on the quality of their line. There are still areas that cannot receive ADSL because of technical limitations, not least of which networks in housing areas built with aluminium cable rather than copper in the 1980s and 1990s, and areas served by optical fiber though these are slowly being serviced with copper. In September 2004, BT Wholesale removed the line length loss limits for 500 kilobits per second ADSL, instead employing a tactic of suck it and see", enabling the line, then seeing if ADSL would work on it. This sometimes includes the installation of a filtered faceplate on the customer's master socket, so as to eliminate poor quality telephone extension cables inside the customer's premises which can be a source of high frequency noise. In the past, the majority of home users used packages with 500 kilobits per second downstream and 250 kilobits per second upstream with a 50 to 1 contention ratio. However, BT Wholesale introduced the option of a new charging structure to ISPs which means that the wholesale service cost was the same regardless of the ADSL data rate, with charges instead being based on the amount of data transferred. Nowadays, most home users use a package whose data rate is only limited by the technical limitations of their telephone line. 
Initially this was 2 megabits per second downstream. Until the advent of widespread FTTC, most home products were first ADSL Max based up to 7.15 megabits per second, using ADSL G992.1 and then later ADSL2+ up to 21 megabits per second. Topic: <laughs> Max and Max Premium Following successful trials, BT announced the availability of higher speed services known as BT ADSL Max and BT ADSL Max Premium in March 2006. BT made the Max product available to more than 5,300 exchanges, serving around 99% of UK households and businesses. Both Max services offered downstream data rates of up to 7.15 megabits per second. Upstream data rates were up to 400 kilobits per second for the standard product and up to 750 kilobits per second for the premium product, whilst the maximum downstream data rate for Ipstream Max is often touted as 8 megabits per second. This is in fact misleading because in a departure from previous practice, it actually refers to the gross ATM data rate. The maximum data rate available at the IP level is 7.15 megabits per second. The maximum TCP payload rate, the rate one would actually see for file transfer, would be about 7.0 megabits per second. The actual downstream data rate achieved on any given max line is subject to the capabilities of the line. Depending on the stable ADSL synchronization rate negotiated, BT's 2OCN system applied a fixed rate limit from one of the following data rates, 160 kilobits per second, 250, 500, 750 kilobits per second, 1.0 megabits per second, 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, 2 2.0 megabits per second, then in 500 kilobits per second steps up to 7.0 megabits per second, then a final maximum rate of 7.15 megabits per second topic <inaudible> speeds on the 13th of august 2004 the isp wanadu formerly freeserve and now ee in the uk was told by the advertising standards authority to change the way that they advertised their 512 kilobits per second broadband service in britain removing the words full speed", which rival companies claimed was misleading people into thinking it was the fastest available service. In a similar way, on 9 April 2003 the Advertising Standards Authority ruled against ISP NTL, saying that NTL's 128 kilobits per second cable modem service must not be marketed as broadband. Ofcom reported in June 2005 that there were more broadband than dial up connections for the first time in history. In the third quarter of 2005, with the merger of NTL and Telewest, a new alliance was formed to create the largest market share of broadband users. This alliance brought about huge increases in bandwidth allocations for cable customers, minimum speed increasing from the industry norm of 512 kilobits per second to 2 megabits per second home lines with both companies planning to have all domestic customers upgraded to at least 4 megabits per second downstream and ranging up to 10 megabits per second and beyond by mid 2006 along with the supply of integrated services such as digital TV and phone packages. March 2006 saw the nationwide launch of BT wholesales up to 8 megabits per second. ADSL services, known as ADSL Max. Max-based packages are available to end users on any broadband-enabled BT exchange in the UK. Since 2003, BT has been introducing SDSL to exchanges in many of the major cities. Services are currently offered at upload, download speeds of 256 kilobits per second, 512 kilobits per second, 1 megabit per second or 2 megabits per second. Unlike ADSL, which is typically 256 kilobits per second upload, SDSL upload speeds are the same as the download speed. BT usually provide a new copper pair for SDSL installs, which can be used only for the SDSL connection. At a few hundred pounds a quarter, SDSL is significantly more expensive than ADSL, but is significantly cheaper than a leased line. 
SDSL is marketed to businesses and offers low contention ratios, and in some cases, a service level agreement. At present, the BT Wholesale SDSL enablement program has stalled, most probably due to a lack of uptake. Still in the year 2015, it was common in highly developed areas like the London Aldgate region for consumers to be limited to speeds of up to 8 megabits per second for ADSL services. This had a major effect in the London rental market as limited broadband service can affect the readiness of prospective tenants to sign a rental lease. <laughs> <laughs> development since 2006 Since 2006, the UK market has changed significantly. Companies that previously provided telephone and television subscriptions also began to offer broadband. Talk Talk offered customers free broadband if they had a telephone package. Orange responded by offering free broadband for some mobile customers. Many smaller ISPs now offer similar packages. O2 also entered the broadband market by taking over LLU provider B, while Sky, B -Sky B had already taken over LLU broadband provider EasyNet. In July 2006, Sky announced 2 megabits per second broadband to be available free to Sky TV customers and a higher speed connection at a lower price than most rivals. In 2007, BT announced service trials for ADSL2+. In Tane, BT Wholesale and BT Retail were chosen as the three service providers for the first service trial in the West Midlands in 2011. BT began offering 100 megabits per second FTTP broadband in Milton Keynes. The service in 2014 operates to speeds in excess of 300 megabits per second. Virgin Media stated that 13 million UK homes are covered by their optical fibre broadband network, and that by the end of 2012 would be able to offer 100 megabits broadband. There are currently over 100 towns in the UK that have access to this service. In October 2011, British operator Hyperoptic launched a 1 gigabit SEC FTTH service in London. In October 2012, British operator Giggler UK launched a 1 gigabit SEC down and 500 megabits SEC up FTTH service in Bournemouth using the City Fibre network. In contrast to development in cities, in rural areas certain people even in 2014 still suffered connection speeds below 200. 256 kilobits per second during daytimes and only can achieve speeds of more than 1 megabit per second during nighttimes. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Wireless broadband. The term wireless broadband generally refers to the provision of a wireless router with a broadband connection, although it can also refer to alternative wireless methods of broadband delivery, such as satellite or radio-based technology. These alternative delivery models are often deployed in areas that are physically or commercially unfeasible to reach by traditional fixed methods. <laughs> Mobile broadband. Mobile broadband is high-speed Internet access provided by mobile phone operators using a device that requires a SIM card to access the service such as the Huawei E220. A new mobile broadband technology emerging in the United Kingdom is 4G which hopes to replace the old 3G technology currently in use and could see download speeds increase to 300 megabits per second. The company EE have been the first company to start developing a full-scale 4G network throughout the United Kingdom. This was later followed by other telecommunications companies in the UK such as O2, Telefonica and Vodafone. Topic: <laughs> School children's access to the internet. A survey on UK school children's access to the Internet commissioned by security company West Coast Cloud in 2011 found Nearly a third of UK children have a mobile phone 15% use smartphones regularly 10% have an iPhone 5% have an iPad 16% have access to a laptop computer 8% have a social networking account 25% have an email address 
Most use their smartphone primarily to make phone calls, but 20% send and receive text messages, 10% go online, and 5% draft and send email. 50% have no parental controls installed on their Internet-connected devices. 5% use their phone or laptop when their parents are out. 50% of parents said they have concerns about the lack of controls installed on their children's Internet devices. 68% of parents who bought their children smartphones said they did so to keep better track of their children. 17% of surveyed parents bought phones after being pestered by their kids, and most pay around £10 per month on children's phone bills, although 20% pay £20 or more. The survey gathered answers from 2,000 British parents of children ages 10 and under. The survey was used as a marketing tool to coincide with the release of West Coast Cloud's new iPad Internet content filtering product. Educational computer networks are maintained by organizations such as Janet and East Midlands Public Services Network. Children's Internet access According to a 2017 Ofcom report named Children and Parents, Media Use and Attitudes Report providing varying age ranges up to age 15 found, ages of 3 to 4. 1% own a smartphone 21% own a tablet 96% watch TV on a TV set for around 15 hours a week 41% watch TV on other devices but primarily on a tablet 40% play games for around 6 hours a week 53% go online for around 8 hours a week 71% mostly use tablets to go online 48% use YouTube 0% have a social media profile ages of 5 to 7 5% own a smartphone 35% own a tablet 95% watch TV on a TV set for around 13.5 hours a week 49% watch TV on other devices but primarily on a tablet 66% play games for around 7.5 hours a week 79% go online for around 9 hours a week 63% mostly use a tablet to go online 71% use YouTube 3% have a social media profile ages of 8 to 11 39% own a smartphone 52% own a tablet 95% watch TV on a TV set for around 14 hours a week 55% watch TV on other devices but primarily on a tablet 81% play games for around 10 hours a week 94% go online for around 13.5 hours a week 46% mostly use a tablet to go online, 22% use a mobile 81% use YouTube 23% have a social media profile ages of 12 to 15 83% own a smartphone 55% own a tablet 91% watch TV on a TV set for around 14.5 hours a week 68% watch TV on other devices but primarily on a tablet 77% play games for around 12 hours a week 99% go online for around 21 hours a week 49% mostly use a tablet to go online, 26% use a mobile 90% use YouTube 74% have a social media profile Topic. Call for better oversight In June 2018 Tom Windsor, Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Constabulary, said technologies like encryption should be breakable if law enforcers have a warrant. Windsor said the public was running out of patience with organizations like Facebook, Telegram, and WhatsApp. Windsor said, There is a handful of very large companies with a highly dominant influence over how the Internet is used. In too many respects, their record is poor and their reputation tarnished. 
The steps they take to make sure their services cannot be abused by terrorists, pedophiles, and organized criminals are inadequate. The commitment they show and their willingness to be held to account are questionable. See also Digital Britain, Internet censorship in the United Kingdom, Illegal file sharing in the United Kingdom Media in the United Kingdom Internet Rush Hour